When I was asked by Teachers TV to teach a Maths Masterclass, I decided to tackle a topic that can be brought alive by a hands-on approach to suit a range of pupil learning styles. It's a topic that is possible to have a lot of fun with. I'm hoping that's what this group of Year 6 students from a number of North London schools will think too. Who loves football? Yay! Yay. What team do you support? Liverpool. Who supports Leeds United? Oh, well, I come from Leeds and I support Leeds United. Boo. I was expecting some boos. Oh, well, I love Leeds. This is a football pitch. It's got lots of different shapes on it. What I'd like you to do is pop your clipboards down and all come up and stand on any area of the football pitch that you like. Come on, on. On we go. Any area. It could be the centre circle, penalty area. I want someone on the corner flags. There's a corner flag over here. Excellent. Excellent. Brilliant. OK, so you're all in an area of the pitch. Goodness me. You're standing there, are you? <coughs> Red card, you're off. Sit back down. Disgusting. <gasps> and you're standing on there, are you? <coughs> Red card. Corner flag. <coughs> Red card, off you go. <coughs> and you, Tarjana, off you go. <coughs> Alex. <coughs> Max. <coughs> Mohammed, you're all off. Ah, now then, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people. Why have I left these people on? Well... Go on. They're all standing in rectangles. They're all standing in rectangles, sort of, but this shape here isn't quite a rectangle, is it? But it is made up of straight no, no. lines, straight sides. Anyone who was standing in a shape that had a bit of curved line on it, I sent off, didn't I? This quarter circle is made up of two straight lines, isn't it? And a curved line. And I sent you off. All of you that are left on the pitch are standing in polygons. <laughs> Adtha, you weren't standing in an area that had all straight sides. How do you feel? I'm very disappointed that I couldn't stay on for the rest of the match and I blame no-one but myself. Sarah, I thought you'd be playing for England and yet you haven't stood in a polygon. You got sent off. How do you feel? I feel so disappointed and very ashamed. I, but I'm just going to keep boosting up my confidence and potential. So, Mohammed, you were sent off too. How do you feel? I can't believe it. It's, this is a disaster. A polygon is a shape with all straight sides, and there's lots of things you can do with polygons. In fact, on your clipboards, you've got polygons in front of you, haven't you? Take a rectangle. A rectangular piece of paper, that's a polygon. No curved sides at all in sight, but they're not all equal, are they? No. no, but it's still a polygon, that's cool. What I'd like you to do is get this paper, and you might want to tear it, or you might want to cut it with your scissors. I want you to make a hole big enough in this polygon big enough in this piece of paper to fit right over your head and right round your body. A hole. Can you do it? You've got 40 seconds. Go. Fold it. It's got to go right over your head and right around your body. It's impossible. Is that what you said? Yes. Nothing's impossible. Fit it through, don't break it. Gotta go right over. Uh, go on, you can do it. Oh right God. over. Oh, uh, lucky. Now, I've got an easier approach. A much easier approach, and I can make a much bigger hole than you did. So it's easy to fit round. Okay. Another piece of paper. This time you will definitely need your scissors. Fold your piece of paper, hold it landscape like so. Yep. Fold your piece of paper in half. Can we manage that? Hold your fingers somewhere in the middle like that. Grip it tight, then cut down towards your fingers and stop when you get to your fingers. So you're going to snip it in half, but you're going to leave a good centimetre or two there, look. Each half, I want you to cut into thirds. So two more cuts. One, two on one side, OK? But leave a centimetre or so gap. And three more wiggly bits on the other side. So we should have... Looks a bit like a crown, doesn't it? You see that? Six. Wiggly bits. Open it out. We've actually got four fingers stuck inside. Can you see? One, two, three, four. I want you to snip, OK, the ends of each of those fingers. Watch carefully before you start snipping. Start with your first finger and snip it from the top across. Instead of cutting the next one from the top, cut that one from the bottom. So you've got a wiggly finger, OK, but it's hanging down. 
back to the top. And then finally, your last one to the bottom. So you've got two cuts from the top and two from the bottom. So if it's worked, it looks a bit like sort of a crown with four fingers sticking up. This is the trickiest bit, but the last bit, right? Grab a finger, it doesn't matter which one. Grab a finger. This time, I want you to cut through the middle of the finger, but you've got to start from the edge of the paper. And you cut up through the middle of the finger and leave about a centimetre at the top. So, up to the top, OK? Last finger. Looking good. Almost to the top. Cool! You've got, if it's worked, a big hole. Now, stand up and pass it through your body. Who managed it? Me! Put your hands up. Brilliant! Well done. Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> OK. Take another piece of A4 paper. Doesn't matter what colour. OK. By doing one fold, do you think we could make this into another shape? Yeah. By folding that down. Shape? A square. A square is the easiest shape to make. If you fold the width onto the length, you do make a square, don't you? With a rectangle bit left. That rectangle bit at the bottom. I want you to fold that rectangle bit at the bottom carefully and then cut it off, because we don't need that, do we? All manage that? Flap it about? Yay! Hang on a minute, is this a polygon? Yeah. Why is it a polygon? Lima? Because it has straight sides. Four straight sides, and they're all... The same. The same or equal. We call this... Do you know? A regular polygon. Good lad. A regular polygon, OK, has equal sides and equal angels. No, angles. Got to spell angles right. Oh, we'll come up with angels. Right then. Now, equal angles. So, hang on a minute. What do you think each angle in a square is? Well, that's easy, isn't it? It's a right angle and it's 90 degrees. Super. Fantastic. Is that easy? Yeah. Really easy. Right. A harder question. Fold it from corner to corner to make a triangle. Yeah? Cool. What do the angles in a triangle add up to? Angles in a triangle. Does anyone know? Does anyone know? You should all know. Tara? 180 degrees. 180! The angles in a triangle add up to? 180 degrees. Does anyone know what sort of triangle that is, then? What sort of triangle? Tajana? Isosceles. Isosceles. Can you spell it? I-S-O-S-C-E-L-E-S. -E -E well done. She's got it right. Give her a round of applause. <laughs> That's a really hard word to spell, but it's easy to understand. An isosceles triangle has how many equal sides, Mohammed? Two. Two. What about the third one? Daniel? It's, um, it's either longer or shorter. Yeah, look. Look at that one there, either longer or shorter. I think yours is longer, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, let's have a look. That bottom side. Oh, it's much longer. So it's isosceles. Brilliant. Tell you what, fold it again in half. Fantastic. What'd you get? Another isosceles. Another isosceles triangle. Yeah. Keep folding it. Isosceles triangles. Fantastic. Yeah. Open it out. Wow. Look at that. Now. When you open it out, look at all your fold lines, you've got a series of isosceles triangles, haven't you? They're all equal to each other, they're all equal in size, and they're all equal in shape. Now then, does anyone know the word that we use to describe two shapes in maths that are the same in size and shape? It's a hard one, and it begins with C. Adtha? A congruent. Congruent, very good. Congruent. Isosceles triangles. Wow. Start folding your triangles up again. I like to see those isosceles triangles. Come on, let's fold them up. I like yours. Come up here. William, I like yours. Come on up. Oh, you've got a really tiny little yellow one, haven't you? Oh, that's lovely, that one. So you come on up as well, Sarah, right? OK, now then. We're going to stick your triangles up on the board. Why not? Shall we stick them up? Why not? OK, let's stick them up. I'll stick mine up. There we go. Have you guessed what it is yet? Pardon? Christmas tree. 
It does look like a Christmas tree. Thank you very much. If you'd like to sit down. OK, it does look like a Christmas tree. It just needs, um... Yeah. Very good. Reminds me of a song, this. Oh, isosceles, isosceles. You look just like a Christmas tree. Isosceles, isosceles. Two angles have equal degrees. Shall we sing along? Oh, isosceles, isosceles. You look just like a Christmas tree. Isosceles, isosceles. Two angles have equal degrees. Can you say a round of applause? Two equal degrees. So, hang on a minute. That's the right angle, isn't it? Definitely? Yeah. Definitely a right angle. 90 degrees. What are these two angles here, then? Can you work them out? Can you work them out without measuring or anything like that? Go on, Sarah. 45 degrees. Why? Why 45? Because, nine, uh, because all angles equal 180, and 90 is half of 180, and half of 90 is 45. That is absolutely superb. Well explained. Do you want to be a teacher one day? Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> OK? 45, yeah. 45 and 90. Wow, so we're learning a lot about polygons, aren't we? OK, we know that they are shapes with all straight sides. What polygons have we come across so far? Squares. Square, OK. Rectangles, Rectangles and... Triangles. Triangles, so far. Brilliant. Now for a more interesting shape. What about a hexagon? Who would like to draw a hexagon on the board for me? Max, go on, you're close. Just pop it in there, OK? Max is going to draw a hexagon. How many sides does he need to draw? How many? Six. Nice and easy. Pretty good. Would it be easy to work out, say, an angle inside a hexagon, do you think? Hmm. Called an interior angle. An angle inside a hexagon. Any guesses? Anyone know? Um, I th I'd think around 120. Around 120. Or well, bigger than 90 degrees. So it's bigger than 90 degrees. It's smaller than 180 degrees, isn't it? What sort of angle do we call that? An angle that's between 90 and 180. Special name? Daniel? Obtuse. Obtuse, angle. yeah. Any better guesses? 120? 135. 135, good try. 110. It's around there, isn't it? 100 and some, I reckon. Now, we could measure it, I suppose, couldn't we? But that diagram's not drawn to scale anyway, is it? So, I know we'll use my old friend the square to help us out. Now, I need a couple of very willing volunteers. Annie and Dadan. OK, you're going to be the folder, Dadan. You stand there. Annie, come round here. You are going to be the holder. Stand round there. We have a piece of square paper. Could you get your square paper out of your folders? Just tucked in at the back. Now, we've got a big square, OK? So we need two people. What I'd like to do is, first of all, you hold it along the edge, fold, the square in half. Nice and easy. Hey, we've made two congruent rectangles. rectangles. Of course we have. Now, the top bit of your square, I want you to fold in half towards the centre. Go on, you can do that. Let's hold that up. We've got to hold it at the centre with our finger, and then we're going to have to fold one of these corners up to the quarter line. Brilliant. OK. See? You've managed it beautifully. Well done. OK, and crease it. OK, so you should have got that. OK? There we go. And now for the second fold, OK? Same thing from the opposite corner. Finger on the centre. Take that opposite corner up. That's it. And stick it onto the quarter line, but over her finger. Well done, and then crease it. Brilliant. OK. Over the centre. The second fold, do you want to put your finger there? Two folds. And if you've done it right, you'll have something like a little V in the middle. You'll have a little V. Well done, you've managed those two folds brilliantly. Now, we've got like an arrow shape at the moment. So, we're going to fold this corner, this corner here, bottom corner, Onto this side here fits right on top of that side there. So we literally just fold it right on top. See if you can have a go at that. So you want to hold that there. You hold it still like that. OK, and you're going to fold that right over onto, exactly, onto that side there. OK, 
Okay. Well done. You're guessing what the next fold's going to be. Okay. So we do the same thing to the other side, like so. All we've got to do, you've done the hard folds now. This corner and this spiky corner of the diamond, we need to fold them in to the centre, both of them. See what shape you get. So, tell you what, you hold this time, hold it down for a Annie. Brilliant, and fold it and crease it, and then you fold your corner in then, Dardan. Right to there. Fantastic. Let's hold that up. OK, so once we've finished our hexagon, Hold them high. Let's see your hexagons. Hey, brilliant. Charlotte, fantastic. Elena, brilliant. Adtha, brilliant. Let's look at the hexagon. It's a regular hexagon. It's a regular hexagon because we've got all sides and all angles that are equal. Let's fold it in half. Fold it in half. Hold it up. What shape's that? What shape is it? Is it a trapezium? It's a trapezium. It's got one pair of parallel sides. Is it still a polygon? Yeah. It's still a polygon, OK. Now, open your hexagon up and fold it along the other opposite corners to make three folds all together. Opposite corner to opposite corner. Crease, that's it. Oof. Thick stuff. OK. So, we have some fold lines on our hexagons. To make this clearer, I'm going to draw my fold lines on. You can see yours quite clearly. Now, my goodness me, we've got six triangles, haven't we? What sort of triangles are those? Hands up. Yep. Equilateral. You think they're equilateral? What's an equilateral triangle? They're when all the sides are the same. Fantastic. <laughs> What do the angles in a triangle add up to? 180. OK, what do you think each angle in an equilateral triangle is equal to? If there's three and they're all the same, yeah? 60. 60 degrees. Let's have a think about this. 60 degrees. Well, I think we could be right. 60 degrees, 60 degrees, 60 degrees. Would that make sense? Because we've got a full turn in the, in the middle, haven't we, there? How many degrees in a full turn? One full turn. Mohammed? 360. 360 degrees. So, 60 plus... 60. Plus... 60. Plus... 60. Plus... 60. Plus... 60. Equals... 360. 60 multiplied by... 6. equals... 360. It works. Are all the angles 60 degrees? Six equilateral triangles. So, what is the interior angle of a hexagon? Another, t another clue. What is Ooh. the interior angle of a hexagon? Tara? 120 degrees. 120 degrees. How do you work that out? Because that's half an angle is 60 degrees. Yep. So, if you double that, it's 120 degrees. Brilliant. 120 degrees. So. The interior, the inside angle of a hexagon, a regular hexagon, is 120 degrees. Welcome to Johnny's Tile Shop. Now then, this is my tile shop. I'm just about to open it. I used to have a coffee business, but that went bust. So, I've got a tile shop, and I want to make my tile shop work. I want it to be successful. I want designs to go on bathroom floors, kitchen floors, maybe some bedrooms. And I want designs made out of regular polygons, just like that hexagon. Now, I've got hexagons. I've got regular quadrilaterals known as? Squares. Squares, of course. Here? Triangles. Triangles. And here, we've got another regular shape. What's that? An octagon. How many sides? Eight. Eight. OK, now, one. Two, three, four. You're the hexagon builders. Over to your box. You people around the squares. One, two, three, four. Around the triangles. And you crouch around the octagons on the floor. Right then, before we start, I want you to design some patterns. But I want tiles with style. 
OK, apart from looking stylish, what else do tiles need to do? You need to tes have them tessellating. What does tessellate mean? Well, tessellate is where you have the same shape yep. over and over again. Over and, and over again. They go, they fit together without any spaces in between. And they could actually go on forever and ever if they fit together like that. OK, brilliant. So we want shapes that Ella's told us now. We want shapes to tessellate. So you've got 30 seconds. See if your regular polygons tessellate. You could probably guess already. Hey, this is interesting, octagons. Lovely. Fantastic. And time's up. OK, put your hands up if you're in a group where your shapes tessellated. Squares, do they tessellate? Yes. Because they fit together without leaving any... Gaps. OK. Triangles, do they tessellate? Yes. Could they go on forever if you carried on, if you had yeah. enough? Fantastic. And octagons, they tessellate, yeah? No. They don't tessellate. They make a pretty pattern, though, don't they? I like them. Right, let's have a look at some of your designs. I'll tell you what, Elena, would you like to put just those three hexagons up on the board? Let's see, we'll have... William, can you put four of your squares to show how they fit together and make a bigger square? OK, can you put six of your triangles up? Just those six. It's not looking good, though. Yours don't tessellate. I've just bought a thousand octagon tiles. No, I'm going to throw my octagons away. They don't tessellate. Or put squares. squares in between. Put a square in between. Interesting. We've got a 90 degree on a square and another 90 degree around the same point. We've got four lots of 90. What's 90 times four? Shout it out. 360. A full turn. So. 360 degrees is good news for tessellations. The angles around a point, they fit together without any gaps. Fantastic. Now, what's the inside angle of an equilateral triangle? Shout it out to me. 60. The inside... 60. How many angles here at the, at the centre? Six. Six times 60. 360. The inside angle of a hexagon. Well, that was 120. 120. And how many are there? One, three. two, three. So, we could have used the math to predict that would have happened. Now, now that we know the conditions for tessellation, in other words, we need the angles at a point where they all meet to add up to... 360! I reckon we can do something with this octagon. Bring four of your octagons up, just four. Yep, yeah, that's it. And arrange them. Uh, go on, Max, you can bring them up. Max had an idea. He said, why don't you put... What was it? Squares in between. Like that, a square. Stick one in. Does it fit? Ray, give Max a round of applause. It was his idea. <laughs> Thanks, Max. That's fantastic. Now, this is really good news because I'm going to use this idea that 360 degrees is the, the main number for tessellations. If we look at these three angles here that join up without leaving any gaps, we've got a 90 degree for the square, have we not? Yeah. What can we say about these other two angles here? Oh. Ooh, ooh, these two angles here. Ooh, Charlotte. 360 degrees, take away 90 degrees, is 270 degrees, and divide that be by two is 135 degrees. That so is absolutely fantastic. Give a round of applause. <laughs> 135 degrees. We've just used maths now to work out the interior angle of an octagon. We have got some different patterns. We have got, potentially, some different tiling patterns for my tile shop. I'm so excited. I really am. Now then, I'm thinking about this, you know? This is my price list. Here are some equal, regular polygons. And we needed six equilateral triangles. That made a tessellation, because six times 60 is... 135 plus 135 plus 90 is... 360! Why is 360 so important? Because it's a full, like, full turn. A full... Turn. Turn. And that's what happens when shapes fit together. There's no gaps. It's a full turn. It's a full set of shapes around a point. Each point. Every point. No gaps. Shapes go on forever. So, who can think of a different combination of numbers or polygons, that's inside angles of these polygons, to add up to 360. A different 
combination. We've got two octagons and a square. What else might add up to 360? Have a little think. What else? You can use as many of any shape as you want. What have you got there? I've got S two triangles and two hexagons. Is that why you wrote 60, 60, 120, 120? Yeah. Two triangles and two hexagons. Yeah. Right, will you hold that for me? OK, will you come up here? Will you hold that to everybody so they can see? Good, stay there. Right, I'm getting excited. Two triangles, that's two. Two hexagons, was it? Yeah. Really? Yeah. You're cool. OK. It works! Yes! Well done. Fantastic. Anyone else got a different combination of numbers? Yeah? Something different? Three triangles and two squares. Three triangles and two squares. Brilliant. Up you come. OK. Add the... Two squares, one hexagon and one triangle. Two squares, one hexagon, one triangle. We've not had that, have we? Come on up. Come on up. Two squares. You might need some more of these. Many apologies. OK, will that triangle fit in there? Fantastic. Another pattern. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Let's admire these shapes because these patterns are all different designs that tessellate, which means they go on for... Ever. And they don't leave any... Gaps. Because the mass tells us, doesn't it? Yes! Doesn't it? Yes! Doesn't it? Yes! 360 is a great number, isn't it? Yes! We have used maths to help me make money for my tile shop. I think I'm going to have a lot of success. So, give yourselves a round of applause and let's get tiling! Come on up!